Hey, Algebra 2, uh, this is called the zero product property. Uh, we've been simplifying and simplifying uh, with, and factoring throughout these last few lessons, but now the directions are going to be to solve. Okay? Solve. Well, I'm going to give you an equation here. 3x squared equals 6 minus 7x. So, when we have an x squared, x to the first, no x, we want to get everything on one side of the equal sign so we can factor. So I'm going to move everything to where the, the positive x squared is. So I'm going to add the 7x, subtract the 6, to knock that out. So I'm left with 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0. So from here, what I can do is break this into two parentheses. Well, since this is just 3x squared, the only factors of 3 are 3x and 1x. And now our options for factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. So we need to have a difference of 7. Since this is a minus, you can have opposite symbols. okay? And they're going to have a difference. Their outer and inner are going to need to have a difference of 7. So let's just try, try a little trial and error here. If I put a 1 and a 6, that gives me 18x and 1x. That doesn't work because that has a difference of 17. If I try a 1 and a 6, that gives me 3x and 6x, which has a difference of 3x. So that doesn't work. So if I put a 2 here and a 3 here, that gives me 9x and 2x, which does have a difference of 7x. So those are the terms that we want. The question is, where does the plus go? Where does the minus go? Well, in order to get a positive 7, I need to do positive 9 minus 2x. So this 9x has to be positive. This 2x has to be negative. So we've done this before. Where we factored into two parentheses. But now, since the directions say solve, it actually wants to know what x is. Well, there is a shortcut here. Well, I'll show you the long way, is first set each parentheses equal to 0. And then we're going to solve. So plus 2, so you get 3x equals 2, divided by 3, x is equal to 2 thirds. Here, subtract 3, x is equal to negative 3. So you have two answers here. Now the shortcut way of just is just switch the symbol. This number right here, just change the symbol. So it says plus 3 becomes a minus 3. Here, this says negative 2, so you make it a positive 2. But if there's a number out in front of the x, that becomes your denominator underneath that term. So you could do it the way where you set each one equal to 0 and work it out to solve for x. Or you can just do this way, which is switch the symbol. Here again, switch the symbol. But if there's a number out front, that becomes a denominator. Okay, so that's how you do that. So let's do a couple more. Let's do a few more. I give you negative 5x squared equals 20x. Again, we don't want to just cancel out the x here, divide stuff by, by x. So what we're going to do is move everything to one side. I want that x squared to be positive, so I'm actually going to move it to the right. 5x squared. Because remember, I'm looking for all possibilities of what x could be. So we get 0 is equal to 5x squared plus 20x. So now we don't have a third term. So we have x squared and x. So actually we can just factor out what do they have in common. Well, they both share a 5, so we can factor out a 5. And they both have an x, so we can divide an x out. If we do that, what we're left with is we divided the 5 out. x squared divided by x just leaves an x plus 20 divided by 5 is 4, and there you have it. So again, the long way, 5x equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0. Notice here, you get x equals 0, here, minus 4, x equals negative 4. Or a shortcut says, if you ever have x out in front where there's no plus or minus, but just being multiplied, then your answer there is 0. Here, just change the symbol. What that is saying is if you were to plug 0 into the original equation, 
to either of these, it would um, work out true. If you plug 0 equals 0, if I plug in negative 4 into here, that gives me uh, 16 times negative 5, which is negative 80. Negative 4 times 20 is negative 80. So you have two answers that end up true. Okay, so again, you can use a shortcut where you just change the symbol in here. An, an X out in front without a plus or minus just becomes 0. Or you can set e each one equal to 0 and solve. Now our next one is 16 equals um, and 9 N squared. So again, let's get everything to one side. So we subtract 16. Now this is in the format of A squared minus B squared, which we rewrite. I don't know why I put parentheses there. Which we rewrite in two parentheses, A plus B times A minus B. So we can actually break this into two parentheses. The square root of 9n squared is 3n. Opposite symbols, the square root of 16 is 4. And there you have it. But again, we want to solve. Therefore, our shortcut says change the symbol, so negative 4. And if there's a number out front, that becomes your denominator. Same thing here. Change the symbol, positive 4. That 3 becomes a denominator. So those are your two answers. Okay? And let's do one last problem. This one's going to actually have a few more answers. This is x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 equals zero. So we can actually factor this into two parentheses. Okay? Well, we see a plus, that means same symbol, and a minus here, so both minus. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Okay, so now we need to figure what two no, uh, factors of 36 add up to 13. So we have 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. These are all the factors that multiply to equal 36. But we need to find the ones that add up to 13. Well, this adds up to 37, this adds up to 20, this adds up to 15. This adds up to 13, and this is 12. So those are the ones you want, 4 and 9, because, again, it adds up to 13. So this is equal to 0. But notice here, for each of those parentheses, we have x squared minus 4. Both of these are in the format of a squared minus b squared, which we can rewrite a plus b times a minus b. So we can break this down into two parentheses, and we can break this down into two parentheses. So x squared minus 4, the square root of x squared is just x. Same thing here. For this one, you get opposite symbols, because again, it says opposite symbols. The square root of 4 is 2. Here, the square root of 4 is 3. Or, sorry, square root of 9 is 3. So now we actually have four parentheses, so we got four answers here. So the way, again, our shortcut is just change the symbol. This becomes x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2, x equals negative 3, x equals positive 3. And there goes your four answers. So this is how we solve. This is called the zero product property. What do you plug into x to make it equal to zero? So again, these are the steps. Get everything to one side. Notice we did that for every problem. We got 0 on one side, and then we factored. Here we factored into two parentheses, solve. Here, we didn't need two parentheses. All we needed was one. We factored out what they had in common, solve. Factor, solve. Factor, solve. This just required us to factor uh, an extra time. So good luck with that. Again, shortcut, just change the symbol. And uh, if you need, if there's a number out in front, Change the symbol, and that number in front of the variable becomes a denominator. So good luck with that, and I hope uh, this helps you. All right, good luck.